how it's going to affect buyers, sellers, prices. We're going to get into it all. And we're going to solve it tonight, which is kind of exciting. Um, okay, so let's just dive into a few simple facts to understand what we're dealing with. The National Association of Realtors, you can boo, just settled a massive case that greatly affects the way in which we do business. They resolved nationwide claims brought upon them by sellers related to broker commissions with a settlement of $418 million. I think the biggest changes we'll see are NAR will prohibit any requirement that listing brokers or sellers must make of compensation to buyers brokers. I, I, I feel like this has also not ever been mandatory but it's all about public perception, right? This is what the, the, the consumers see as standard, but this has been, uh, uh, they, they haven't been laws. It's been standard you know, market practice. That's gonna be a shakeup. And if they do offer them, we, cannot, we can no longer offer them on the MLS. You're looking at me like this is all foreign to you. Um, you just so get I'm here? just listening. Another huge change. I'm wondering why we're here actually. For MLS participants, this is like 20 more minutes. Another huge change for MLS participants is that we will no longer be able to show a house without first having a buyer's broker agreement signed. I don't know what's going to happen if we don't, but that's going to be a big part of it. So let's get into it and figure out how to solve this or at least how to get motivated and figure out if we should all be applying for new jobs in six months. Um, okay, tonight's panel includes Aaron Kerman. He's already applied to Pizza Hut. I thought, I thought it was going to... Your mic's not on. Oh. No, it's on. <laughs> Aaron Kerman, Josh Flagg. We're going to skip and go to Brandon Williams and the Honorable Rainy Romito Williams. <laughs> Guys, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's like it's my house. Um, okay, Josh Flagg, your ego indicates that you uh, will need to go first. So I'm going to jump <laughs> right in with you. Uh, let's, let's get to it right away. Is this going to change the way that you do business? And if so, how? No, because here's the thing. You know, buyers can come to a house and there used to be in like in the 80s a threshold rule where if you took a client to a house and you essentially cross the threshold, like the front door, you were entitled to a commission. I love that rule. That was the best rule. It wasn't even the 80s. It was like the 90s. Too. Maybe even up to the or, 90s. Even 2000, 2000 actually. 2000. It was in your career. It was when I was 17. Which was, yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, so the threshold rule, that doesn't apply anymore. Uh, technically, if you come to a house today with an agent, uh, the agent's entitled to commission if you write a contract, right? So the question is, who's going to pay the broker now? It's not really so much a matter of we're getting rid of the buyer's agent. It's not going anywhere because if you go to the house with an agent, you're, people still need to go have an agent. I mean, there's so many reasons why. And it's just going to be a matter of who's paying that agent and it's going to be a negotiation. So the way I look at this is, this is a huge headache, but I don't think this is going to get rid of the buyer's agent. I don't think this is going to really shake up the industry. It's just another aggravation between wildlife, ULA, you name it, who knows what's coming next. It's just a headache in my opinion. Does anyone on the panel have a difference of opinion there? I actually agree with him more or less. I think that the way we do business will be different. Um, I actually don't believe buyers will be paying buyer broker commissions. I just don't see it. Um, I, I doubt a buyer is going to write a huge check to get represented. I think the commission is still going to be paid for by the seller. Uh, and I think it's just we're going to have to work around it with getting the buyer broker commission paperwork signed. And then going to the seller and saying, look, if you want to sell your house, this is going to be the fee. And, and this is how it's going to be a nice. I, I think the system will be similar with additional paperwork and additional negotiation. Right. You guys feel the same? I think so. I think it's not unlike a, a single party where a lot of times, you know, if you have a pocket listing, you'll get a single party sign. I agree. I think it's a huge aggravation. I disagree in the fact that I think that it is a major um, change in the industry. I think the industry is changing drastically. I think it's um, more than an inconvenience. It is degrading the buyer's agent in, in such a way that their first negotiation is now 
themselves a lot like commercial. So you're not going to have this privileged information or, you know, give anything away without getting it signed. Okay, great. We can all handle that. Where I, what, what I think is really detrimental to the industry is the very romantic emotional experience, which is residential real estate. You know, the other day I closed a house for $17 million. And the way that I closed it was I said to my buyer, get in the car and come take a look at this. We were looking at another house for fit finishes on, on, just for fun. And I said, you got to come see this. And he got in the car and he came and saw it. And he was like, I, I like it. I'm going to buy it. He wasn't in the market to buy it. I mean, how often do you go to, to look at a car or, you know, any level from a pair of jeans to a car to a house? Like it's emotional why we purchase things. Residential is emotional. And that is not fun when you have to have that first conversation. Was, come look at this, but first sign this. And they're like, Rainy, I'm not in the market for a house right now. I'm not signing that. So I think it takes away a lot of the mystique and a lot of uh, the reason why buyers make impulsive purchases. But let's just play devil's advocate. If we, listen, I barely represent buyers because I don't want to run around with buyers and not have a guaranteed commission, which is why I built my business on listings. If now the system is forcing us to use buyer broker agreements to a certain degree, that could be actually be very beneficial to us actually securing the representation of a buyer. No, but it's only one time. It's not every time. Hear me out. There's a, there might be a, a possibility to get every time, right? And then you can have, because if you're doing the buyer broker, like in, let's just say it turns into a similar fashion, like listings, there might be ability. I'm not, by the way, I don't like this world. I think it's horrible. Just putting some silver lining on it. If you are a buyer's agent and you have the ability to get that commitment, there is a possibility to make it work. Yeah, that would be a beautiful thing if you can sign somebody, but nobody's going to ever agree to sign. And I will only be exclusively represented by you on all transactions. I, 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 I would I, bet you're wrong. I, I, bet, I, I, I think it just makes it a listing agent's market. These buyers that want to cut the buyers that want to cut you out because they think it's going to save them a dollar are going to go straight to the listing agent. I think it's um, really undermining the other side. I think it's short sighted. They're they're not looking at what a buyer's agent really provides them, which is protection, your own side of negotiation. Otherwise, what are they gonna do, hire an attorney or who's gonna do the paperwork for them? Oh, you are, and they're gonna expect you to do it for 1%. This and the, it's- This is the first time I've heard Brandon so quiet. I've never heard you, I've never heard this before. Well, you know what they say, the calm before the storm. Okay? Now let me get into this. I can see through it. I, no, sold, so, uh, I, I sold his beach house yesterday. Our and, beach house. His beach house. Sorry, our sorry, beach sorry. House. I sold their beach house yesterday, and my client goes, I'm so not looking forward to being yelled at anymore every day by this guy. Because <laughs> the way he talks. <laughs> that's his talking voice. No, that's Brandon. Like, that's, Sam, that's, that's Brandon. how he talks. He yells. That's our pillow talk. So, so Rainy, you brought up, you. it's what? That's our pillow talk. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that from you guys. The uh, So... If you're going to have to sign a buyer broker agreement, what happens when I want to take someone very quickly to your house like we did the other day in Truesdale? I was showing a client houses. I called Rainy and I'm like, you have a, a, an incredible house on Hillcrest. I've got to show them this. We ran over there. What happens in July? We have to have something signed before we can go there. I mean, a lot of our business is done Old like school that. papers in the car. I think this is, I hear gnar, it sounds gnarly to me. I think this is... <laughs> I don't think people really realize what's coming. And it's exactly like ULA. I think this strangles business. I think people, you know, I learned from the best in Beverly Hills. And that was the Normand family side. Normand was my coach. I learned from the Persians. And what did the Persians do? They go direct. Okay. They want to cut out the oh, oh, tech. Oh, tech. Tech is about, I've worked with tech. Save it commission. Why not? I worked with, I work with tech buyers all the time. And what I found with tech people that sell their company in seven years for $2 billion, they usually want to cut out the middleman. That's what tech is. Tech is cutting out the fat and going direct. I think it's a very scary time. I think uh, so many agents are going to, are going to dissipate. Sure. I think the, you know, the small percent that does the majority of the deals will be fine. And I think uh, a lot of people, I think now your commission is completely on the table. We were on a con on a conference call today fighting for a buyer's commission with a very big, uh, powerful attorney representing a major celebrity. 
And finally, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to wave the surrender flag and just sign. The he didn't want to sign our listing because he was like, I'm not going to sign it. He wanted to chisel out the buy side and say, I'm not, I'm not, I want to change the contract. I know this hits in July, but I'm not going to renew your contract unless you take it out. And we fought, we and went, we tried, we tried, tried for say, 20, we 30 tried minutes. to say subject to July, there will be a buyer's commission. He's like, I'm not signing that. And he wouldn't sign our contract for two weeks. We had been fighting on it. And finally, I got smart and I go, just get it fucking signed because we're susceptible now. We fought, you know, there's a saying, no good deed goes unpunished. And, you know, as much as we try to fight for the other side and want to fight for brokers and other agents because we all are one together, but it's very scary. And I think now you'll be lucky to see 20, 50, 100 grand on one side of a deal. And I think, you know, I think it's going to, I think it's going to, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's a, it's going to be a bloodbath out there. And that's what, that's what commercial is too. I commercial told, I told brokers. God, I was looking for a answer. lot more positivity from you on this one. A lot more hope because, well, you bring up a good point. Like the buyers are going to go direct. So what's going to happen to dual agency at that point? Are you going to rep the buyer side for free? No, no. What's the conversation with the seller? Three when the percent, buyer comes three direct percent, to your listing. Probably. You start at four and they're going to grind you down. It's but, it's going to be very challenging. But, What's your value? That's what it's going to be. What's your value at? Guys, what are I, you worth? Here's the thing. I, I've talked to like literally CEOs of Fortune 500 real estate companies. And, uh, and multiple of them, actually. Let's hear <laughs> they, they have all said they believe that we're going to see a 30% decline in commissions overall. They, I don't think it's doom and gloom. I don't think our industry thirty percent is major. It's major. It, it's just a lot. It's a lot. But it's not what the way you're talking about it. We have to be prepared. Well, I just said a third of the agents will be gone. There's thirty percent. What's going to happen, in my humble opinion, is look, listing agents are going to become more powerful. The listing agent is going to have to hone in even bigger and better than they were before. And I do agree that dual is going to happen a lot more. And I do believe that there's going to be a, a space for the buyer commission as long as it's paid for by the seller. If that's going to be paid for by the seller in technical, in technical terms, as long as the sellers are willing to pay. But if we have, as an industry, stand up and say, look, guys, we have buyers. Our buyers need representation. And we're not going to represent your house unless you sign our commission. Then there is a way to keep the industry stable. But and why, did, why what, didn't we do exactly that? That's exactly what we're just saying is we just did this this morning. It was an exercise in getting an $80 million listing signed or not because he was not capitulating. He would not sign what we were saying. We think it's fair. How do you sell an $80 million house without incentivizing the buyer? He said, not my problem. There was an NAR ruling. Well, I think it's very, I think it's, I think it's too. It's what, what about ULA now? Now everybody's getting squeezed every which way. So the high end market is, and everybody always thought attorneys have always thought we made too much money. Business managers, they're pissed. They're like, I get paid an hourly fee and you just find somebody a house and make they don't 200, realize what it 500, a million dollars, which by the way, we all have done that. I think this for the high end market, I think this is very scary times and ULA does not help. And I think these are horrible policies. I think everything is getting squeezed. Look at inflation. Look at what now you need to buy a home and how much money you need to make. The dollar is being devalued. Everybody is being squeezed. If you're not in an industry like oil, the military industrial complex, tech, it is very hard out there. The middle class is, is really dying right now. And it's very scary times. I think it's way more than this. This is policy. You should really think about who you vote for. And I think everything is getting squeezed in our business. This is now is we don't owe you anything. We will tell you what we owe you. That's and listen, I think we're going to be, I think us will be fine and we're going to fight like hell. But the days of getting your real estate license and going, hey, I could meet a buyer at an open house and bring them here and get a two and a half, three percent commission, those days are done. So the consensus is it's going to shift entirely and we have to adapt with it if we want to survive. I think we're going to have yeah. to. We have no shift, choice. I mean, I mean, and the market it's... shifted. The policy is here. Policy is now. We could complain about it. We could, you know, talk all the shit we want about the policy, but the policy is here now. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? 
as an industry, we still have voices, right? We still have the ability to fight for what we believe. And at the end of the day, I had a similar situation on $55 million uh, deal that I was trying to get a listing on today. And I said, look, you don't want to give a buyer's agent commission, then you're out of business because you're relying on one person. Was it my client? It might have been. <laughs> it might have been. And I, and I maybe you were 88 million and I was 55. I wonder who's going to get the listing there. I got um, it. I got it. I'm uh, pretty sure. Um, and what do they say? So you said and, and, and no I, buyer's and commission. No, I, I was, you won't get a buyer. I said, listen, I'm a great agent. I'm really great at what I do. I'm one of the top in the world. But guess what? I am one guy in a big world. So do you want to rely on me alone? Or do you want to encompass the rest of the world with a bunch of agents that have a lot of buyers and get more bang for your buck? And what guess what they're going to gonna say? I'll tell you what he said. He signed 4%. I didn't get five. He signed four. He signed four. He said, divvy it up. Uh, and, and he said, and you know, I'll be fully transparent. He said, if I represent the buyer, bring it down to three. And it's not signed yet though. So who knows what, what could change. But nevertheless, that's kind of how we did it. There's no, there's, there, listen, here's the reality. Our commissions are going to get compressed. There's no way around it. People now know that they can negotiate. They're going to negotiate. They're going to try. But my argument is, that's been happening forever and a day anyway. Our commission has always been on the chopping board. I mean, how many times have we had to, you know, reduce our commissions to make a deal? And, you know, I work with one of the most famous uh, developers, Discovery Land, Michael Meldman, and his famous saying is, we're only a commission away from making a deal. So as realtors, we have to be the most knowledgeable, the most experienced, the most professional, and really bring our value when we come to the table and let people know we mean business and that they can't just chop us up on the, on the, on the chopping block. So, but now, you know, we were protected by, by NAR and escrow was amazing. I always said, if we didn't have escrow, we'll never get paid. That's right. If our commission was up to the buyer or seller to pay us. Well, we really, we really it. have law and order here in our real estate market. Europe, it's Europe is wild. It's a free for all, you know, it's other, the same thing. it's the same thing. Europe. And, and we were really protected and that's really what's unfortunate, unfortunate. And I think what all of us were wishing that we could have had our own and gone against NAR, but unfortunately, you know, the, the industry is changing so quickly and we didn't have time to get it together. And here we are. So we just have to roll with it. Like Aaron said, and I, I think it's just a matter of how good of a negotiation. I don't know if any of you have been in a listing appointment with Aaron Kerman, but he's a masterful negotiator and he has a skill to get listings. He's a really, really great at signing, signing up listings. And if you ever have the pleasure of going in with him, you can understand why you negotiated 4%, but how good of a negotiator are you? Because by, you're, by that's way, what it's going to be. By the way, I'm like, this is after I, I, we were just telling a story, Rainy and I uh, off topic, Rainy and I had some challenges with each other. We had couples therapy, not that I'm married to Rainy, but we, we literally, we, we literally hashed it out. But listen, the, the thing that we have going for us is it's all of us and we're all here together, right? We could talk about all the devastating things that happened the past month and a half, how horrible it is. And by the way, it's shitty for the consumer. And at the end of the day, the consumer is going to suffer. And there's no doubt about that. And I think the, especially on the, the price sensitive markets, it's going to be even more difficult for them because these are people's big investments. But moving on, we could talk about that all day long, or we could say, look, what are we going to do as a business? What are we going to do as an industry? And how are we going to protect ourselves? I stand by if a seller doesn't want to pay a buyer commission, right? And you have a buyer and you bring that seller offer and you say, look, I have a buyer for you, but I need to know that I'm going to get paid. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And the beautiful thing about that is your buyer has already agreed that you have the right to do that now, right? You have the right to protect your commission if you're representing that buyer. Now that seller might have to agree to give that five, four, or whatever percent is going to get negotiated because without it, he's not going to make that sale unless you're Williams and Williams and you have a huge arsenal of clients and that's fine, but that's even limited when you're talking about 
all the buyers in the world in this market on at houses. Yeah, but where's the spontaneity? Where's the just like, let's go look at a house? I mean, it's just, it's an extra step. It's And really this cool. document won't say, how, it'll say that you rep the buyer, but it won't yeah. say at what percent. Yes, or it, what will. Cost. it no, will. It has to state the price. It has to state the exact commission you're going to get and but the how time could, period. But it doesn't make sense because what if the what if the sellers don't agree to that commission? So they'll so now the buyers will pick up that fee. And the scariest part is is now mortgage. Now you can't put that in mortgages. That's right. That's that's, that's the scariest. Is now this was all added into the mortgage. Right. So people are now now the fight is it's not in the mortgage. And now I have to come out of pocket to pay you. That's the scariest issue of them all. Right. Do we really expect buyers to pay an additional $200,000 commission? No. No. They're not going to do it. There's, there, that's not going to happen. So you, we have to run on buyers will not be paying commissions. Sellers are still going to have to pay commissions for the system to work. You know, what stops, you know, the, the idea here was transparency, right? They felt like the public was being duped, right? So they got rid of putting uh, broker percentages in the MLS. You can no longer offer them publicly. What's stopping me from calling you and saying, hey, that house on Bel Air Road, are you paying a buyer's commission? And you're like, no, he wouldn't do it. I'm like, okay, bye. And I call the other guy. So how... So, so really, the consumer is getting screwed here, like they were before. There's a great book called Freakonomics. I think I mentioned the other day, and at like 20 years old, and they talk about how the agents have so much control and power uh, in one of these chapters. So they tried to eliminate that by this landmark ruling, and it's not really working the same way because at the end of the day, we're still going to negotiate together, and the consumer is the one who's going to be screwed. It I mean, listen, the reality is this was a, 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 an industry under attack, bottom line. They wanted to see our commissions get compressed. That's why this happened, because the reality is we had transparent commissions, very straightforward. It couldn't be more straight. MLS was clear. Uh, sellers knew what they could pay. Sellers knew they could negotiate. Buyers knew that they could negotiate. All of this is part of our history, right? Um, but now that we are where we are, you have to assume that the federal governments are going to want buyers to have representation. It's a given. Like Otherwise, this system will fail. Like There's no way around that. The question becomes, how are we going to get paid? Now, I think it's going to be, I could be wrong, prove me wrong. I think it's going to be as simple as we get a buyer broker agreement, and I disagree with you. I'm going to get six months on mine moving forward. You disagree with Josh? Yeah, because he's like, oh, it's per property. It I'm, per property. But I'm going to, I'm going to. It say, is per property. You guys I, should see the thing. Aaron's going to cross it out. I hear you. I'm literally going to, literally, I'm going to get an exclusive buyer broker agreement for my timeline in perpetuity. Just sign that. I, I think a lot of people are because this is going to be the new system, and the new system. We didn't even have buyer broker agreements that were used very often. Soon. They are going to be used very often, and the buyers are going to need to have an advocate on their side. And those buyer broker agreements, in, in my humble opinion, are then going to get negotiated with the listing agent, and then we're back in business. I'll it's tell annoying. you why no one in their right mind is going to sign that, because if I come along and say I have a pocket listing and I'm tied to Aaron Kerman, that broker, that agent, or that that client will not be able to work with me. With all due respect, I get them signed all the time. I, I get I get exclusive. I mean, when you I, get buyer brokers agreement signed point, all the time, I get buyer. Yes, really. Yes. At the high end, yes. Aaron gets anyone to sign anything. Was, Talk to uh, us, Aaron. How do you? What are we going to say as I, agents? Actually, what do we say? Never had a buyer sign. Yeah. What it's, do we it's say? It's a good to, question because that's what people want to know. Yeah. How are we going to prove our worth the, as buyers? Agents? I think I think the conversation that's, that's the is question. the question is how are we going to prove our worth as buyers agents? And I think that much like listing agents, when we go to you know list a house, we have to prove our worth. And a seller is going to pick who they believe is right to sell that house. It's going to be the same with buyers now. It's not going to be a free for all. A buyer is going to have to a buyer's broker an agent is going to have to prove their worth. I believe we're going to have listing listing like I think we're going to have to start creating listing books for buyers, breaking down the system, breaking down what we do. And that is going to be a very competitive thing in itself. And I do agree with you. A lot of the agents are going to get out. Like, it, you know, the, the, the fittest will survive and do great. 
and a lot of people will probably be eliminated from the business reality. So how do you, obviously you've the gift of the gab, everyone up here does. Um, so it's going to be easier for some. But this is already happened. Sorry to interrupt you. This has been happening with Zillow and Redfin. You know, they, they offer, you know, you buy through me 1%. That's all you pay. And guess what? You go on a listing appointment and they say that. And I'm like, look, you can go to an agent in the Valley and get for 1%, but good luck. You're going to be in a lawsuit and you're not going to have proper representation. So whenever that, whenever the, uh, client comes to me and is like, you know, I want to reduce your commission. I never reduce it. And I still walk out with a full commission because I tell them, great, good luck. Go have that person represent you. Sit, call me out and let me know how that works out afterwards. Yeah. But you're also the queen of Beverly Hills. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. You made us and, and, listen, and, and listen, the, and I'm talking amongst uh, American real estate. Okay. We're in a small bubble here. We're developers and this is where we can negotiate these side deals. I'm talking overall America. This is coming to every state. To, this is coming to every state. And I think buyers are going to get, I just, my, my, my thing is buyers are going to get straight. It's like, I'm going straight to the, I'm going straight directly. And I've actually seen that lately since ULA, I've seen that where people are coming direct. I'm getting way more direct calls recently of, yeah, I'll have you represent us. What do we get? If you represent us, are you going to reduce your commission? What is, did you make, you know, cut a deal with the other? And they always say, oh, and if you double represent us, you only have to pay 4% or three and a half percent. But so, you know, we're also, it's two different markets that we're talking about. And, you know, Josh Flagg, like, you know, he's, you know, he's the upper echelon of Beverly Hills and Bel Air. This guy has tea every, every lunchtime, the polo lounge with candy spelling. This isn't real, you know. This isn't like reality. This is, but great facts. <laughs> sounds lovely. Movie, it sounds lovely. movie night Mary. in our it theater, popcorn. So these discount brokers have existed for a long time. They've offered their cheap services for a long time. Now they are spending a lot of time and money ramping up these services. They see the sea change, and what's stopping a company like some brilliant private equity guys putting together another company that's going to come and just do everything on the high end? Yeah across the board for a for flat 1%. fee. So instead of 1%. instead of $250,000, like I'll give you $40,000 or I'll, I'll go to Josh. Black. I think that's going to happen for the majority of, of, of lower. I don't, for the upper echelon, higher three, five, 10, 15, 20. I think we still have some time, but I think that's always been the goal. Look at stockbrokers. Stockbrokers used to make a shitload of money and now you go to E-Trade, okay? And pay $7 a month. Listen, this is the reality. This is what's happening in America. There's a massive change, I truly believe. And I believe we weren't represented, and I believe they're they're trying to squeeze us. And, you know, here's another thing to think about, and I hate to get off subject, but, you know, they're going to raise minimum wage so much, okay, at all these fast food places. Guess what you're going to see? Robots. <laughs> you think it's a right. joke? Right. You think it's a joke? Right. Let me tell you something right now. 35% of all of jobs in America is from drivers. Drivers. What happens when the vehicle goes fully autonomous and they don't need you on the roads anymore? Overnight, they could take out this entire system. And if you understand, and I'm going to get into this, boys, the new world order, <laughs> you'll understand really what's going on. And you got to start looking at it and you think Communist. I'm a conspiracy yeah. theorist, but guess what? The game is real. Okay. The game is real and you're going to have to get way more mean. You're going to have to get way more lean, put down the alcohol, put down the drugs. You're yeah. going to have to get your, your game is going to have what? to get your really value. Tight. Your value add is going to have to be extensive. Why now, now, can, now why see, can you not be taken? Why, why can you, you not be married. taken out by a robot? What's your value? I mean, it's so true. It's like, how about the travel agent? Everything. Attorneys. It's already been Everything. taken. What do you mean? The travel agent has already been taken yeah. out. So should we shift gears and just talk AI right now? Cause yes, that's the bigger go. issue. I have Elon Musk coming in. Elon, are you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm right Even here. Elon yeah. says the most dangerous thing uh, I'm, I'm, is AI. Fact, I'm, uh, I'm gonna workshop Elon Musk tonight. Uh, the, the question is so. Uh, also, let's let's shift gears to you guys who have your own brokerages. So, aside from what you guys are doing, how are you training your buyers agents to go get buyers broker agreements 
bullshit side. That's what it's all about. It's all about your, your, it's the dialogue that you have. You have to have a pitch. Your first sale is yourself. What is your value and why do they need to pay you? And why and what is your relationship with the listing agent? This is why listing agent and buyer agent relationships are so important because the listing agent is going to go to bat for you and is going to say, I know Cooper Mount, he's very valuable. He's got his clients really in control and we need to pay him. We need to incentivize him because his client is his mom and he'll take his mom somewhere else. I know Ben Bylock. I know, I know Zach Goldsmith. These guys are superstars. 6%. 6%. Have you seen the show? It's a hit. We want them. And here. then, okay. The and days then, of 6% in, commission are over. It's now seven. In all reality though, the, the buyer, the buyer's agent needs to say to the buyer, it's like, why would I pay you? And you're like, because Mr. Buyer, who's going to do your inspections? Who's going to make sure that you have a proper geologist out there? Who's going to make sure that every single system in this house go through the reports with you? Who's going to help you get your insurance? Who's going to take you from the beginning of the contract to the end and protect you and make sure that you don't buy, you know, a house. Bullshit. Let's waive all contingencies and let's close this. <laughs> Two and a half percent that. right now. Who's in? And there's going to be buyers like that, that they're going to say, I don't care. I want the deal. I don't care if the house is falling down. I want the deal. And and then there's going to be the buyers that are more fastidious and they say, I want proper representation. So there's going to be something for everyone and we're going to have to work smarter. We're going to have to work harder and we're going to have to work more collaborative. Your relationships are going to have to Look be- Look at what really ULA has done to us. I mean, it's literally high end is down 50%. I mean, look, S they're more. squeezing us to death. I mean, it's 70%. It's 70, 50, who knows? I mean, it's, listen, it's not, it's not great. I mean, what's happening here in Los Angeles is it's, 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 it's ridiculous. You know, and by the way, guys, whoever makes a million dollars, they just raised your state taxes to 14.5%. When I is this going to gonna stop? You. It's time for a revolution. And this is what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is why you don't let them take your guns away from you. Okay. Cause it was all about the Second Amendment was yeah. over taxation and yeah, overthrowing a corrupt okay. government and taking back what's yours. OK, so Rainey, who's ready Rainey, for this. <laughs> Rainey gives me single signals for years, like in a baseball match when she wants Brandon <laughs> off. <laughs> Jump in for Brandon. Got it. Um, OK, but but as a broker. I want to know how you guys are going to deal with advising because you don't you don't walk into your meeting and say we're fucked. You are guiding your soldiers, but you have to, you, they look to you as their leader to guide them into the future. How do I prove my worth? I don't know. Brandon, Rainey, Aaron, how do I prove my worth? And you've well, got Brandon to give them something. Brandon thinks we're fucked. So, else, I mean, we know Brandon's or, a fan. Yeah. I'm not saying, or I'm not saying I'm broker. fucked. I'm saying I'm working twice as hard for less money. I'm not saying I'm fucked. I already, listen, it's going to make my job easier because a lot of times I don't want to deal with another broker, to be honest with you. I'm not talking about you. Yeah, I'm uh, talking about the uh, agents uh, me, that you I'll, I'll bring up. I'll tell you what we're doing. First and foremost, and we're not changing our theory, we tell people to be listing agents because when you're a listing agent, you have the control. So don't change that. And if you're a buyer's agent, change gears and focus on listings because once you focus on listings, you will have the control. That's the first thing. Second thing, I agree with you that more buyers are going to come to listing agents direct. As a listing agent... It's an amazing opportunity. You could probably make anywhere between 30 and 90% more than you would make before. Focus on the listings. Then as far as the buyer's agents, because we're going to need them, become a very seasoned buyer's agent. Know your worth. Know what you're doing to protect your clients. Explain it to your clients so that they feel comfortable signing that buyer broker agreement and become very skilled at negotiating with the listing agents to protect that commission. And the last thing is we're already creating our buyer broker packages and they're going to look just as good as our listing packages. Cause I know come July, we're going to need those to succeed. And if we do those things, I hope we're not fucked. I hope we're going to be down cause we're going to be down some points along the way, but it might not have to be as devastating as people think. Cause I think the media loves to say fake news. You started it. Fake news. The market's down. Buy fake broker, news. Okay. You started that thing making a joke, right? And you watch but CNN. You 
you do watch CNN. Don't <laughs> tap into my fucking YouTube TV. But but at the end of the day, do you really think? And by the way, you, anything's possible. But here's the reality. Step away from this bubble of Beverly Hills that people are probably used to buying a lot of homes over and over again. Go into the real world. Buying a home is somebody's most expensive investment in their pocket. There, there's not going to be a world in which those people aren't going to have adequate representation. It just is not going to exist. So yes, we're going to have to work harder. We're going to have to work smarter. We're going to have to be stronger. Join the right brokerages that you believe are going to get you to where you need to be. Join the right partners and move on. Because we could sit here and complain all day long about it and like bitch about where we are in the world. And yes, it's all kind of fucked up. I agree with you. Or we could say, fuck it. Let's move forward. Let's figure out a way. Let's figure out our path forward. I don't think any of us exactly know the path forward yet, but I think we better go in with a little bit of optimism because if we don't have that, then we really are in trouble. And I'm not game for that. Like, this is still how I pay my bills. I'm optimistic. The strong will survive. I agree so that. I'm optimistic, but I'm just giving you the reality of the situation and where we are in the new America and what's really going on. No, I'm dead serious. Go to the gas station now. Go to the gas station now. It's $6 a gallon. Okay, go drive from here to Palm Springs. And it was like buying a ticket to go flying to New York now. Okay? The whole game, the grocery store. You have store, an F-150. Everything, everything. No, I have a Ram and TRX. A Tesla. Hellcat 6.2 supercharged engine. Okay, it gets seven miles per gallon. A big engine. That's Get it I right, mean. girl. Get and, it right. And, and that's such one of his cars. Not, yeah, but but I think it's true. I mean, I think it's all perception is reality. We were we were all running off of an industry standard, and the industry standard was great and it protected us for a long time. And the truth is, is as Zach said, it never really was written in stone. That's why we're all so upset about this because why are we being penalized for something that we weren't pushing? And AR wasn't pushing. Nobody was pushing sellers. If you look at the contract. They, it wasn't forced upon a seller. It became industry standard, and it was great for a while. And our run and our time has come up on this, and so now we have to find a new monologue, a new way to pitch ourselves. A new, new NAR. We got to get rid of it. The NAR fucked us. They did. Let's get rid of NAR. What do we need them for? Nothing right. now. No, I'm dead serious. Brandon, Brandon just for? ordered 80 copies of The Art of War for all his uh, staff and ready. agents. I want Brandon to write a book on the New America. Guys, I'm telling you, we're right here. Look at it. Criminals in this city now have more homeless and criminals have more rights than the uh, tax paying citizens. So well, if you don't see it out there, this is all changing. Why do you think people and I hate to say it, this is the best. I'm from Los Angeles. I love this city. This is the best city in the world. This is where people come to make it where their dreams come true. But you know what? 18,000 major corporate corporations fled during COVID, like Oracle, like Tesla. People, every day my clients are going, you know what? I've had enough of this shit. I'm going to Miami. I'm going to Texas. I'm going to Montana, okay? More regulations, more taxations, okay? More restrictions on business. People leave. And it's happening. ULA is a perfect example. This to me is like another, this to me is like, well, it's no coincidence that ULA was 5%, 5.5%. I mean, it's always the commission away. It's always the commission. It's always been a topic. I mean, I was talking to some of my friends that are in the business a lot longer than me. Barry Peel, he's been at Sotheby's forever. He said, when this first conversation started coming about, he's like, Rainey, this has been since the 80s and 90s, they've been coming after us. That's why it was 6%, then it was 5%. And then, you know, oftentimes it's 4%. So this has always been the hot topic or our realtors paid too much. So that's why we always have to prove our worth. And that's why you have to be a full service agent. You have to have knowledge and information. You have to be up on everything and you have to make the process seamless for your client, protect your client and do for them what they cannot do for themselves. That's how you get paid. Yeah. So Brandon, you and I talked a lot in the past about like we go to Europe and we say we're from Los Angeles and there used to be a real cachet for it. Right. When you said that. And now people kind of like look down. Yeah, people are like, Los you know, Angeles. LA. I'm not trying to get you to pontificate yeah, no, again. Yeah, but like people, you know, listen, I love LA. <laughs> it's going somewhere. The, today was one of the most beautiful days of the year. I love weather. 
and I love LA in the in in the fall and the spring and winter. There are no better, you know. I call my friends on the East Coast. I'm like, how's the weather? And I'm like, oh, it's 80 degrees and it's perfect here. But you know, now there's a stigma in LA where they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. Oh, really? You're from California, California? And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm, and you know, this is the reality of the situation. You better start really figuring out who you're voting for and who's representing. Mr. You. President, 10 seconds. So all I'm going to say is make real estate great again. <laughs> <laughs> so does this stop you guys? Now do you want to expand in other states because California screwed? You want to expand your company, or uh, are you not, able we're, we're to not, expand? We're, we're not your worried about it. Our our company is going to do fine. We're going to do fine. This is a conversation for strictly buyers agents, and if you're a buyers agent, you just have to, you know, you have to get a little bit stronger, a little tougher, and a little you're smarter. You're going to have to know every goddamn property out there. You're going to have to school your your clients where they go, "Holy shit, this guy knows everything. He's the best. Where do I sign up?" It's and also really, going to be a big off-market world. Pocket, especially that's what here. I was going to say. Pocket but, listings are going to be really prevalent, I think. But, but, but look. But not, though. The sellers are going to be like, no, why but would look, I? At the end of the day, all the rules have kind of changed. Pocket listings are going to be back. All of these things are opportunities for everybody in this room to redirect the way they do business and make more. Like, I, like look, at the end of the day, I always tell people, I know how to make money. I know how to spend money even faster. But I know how to make money. And... Anytime there's a change, the smartest people are going to the room and we're going to study the change and figure out how to monopolize it for themselves. And so I think that that's what everyone in this room should do. I think they should take a deep dive in their business. If your business is 90% buyers today, shift it. And if you don't shift it, then get a really good plan on how you're going to represent those buyers and how you're going to get paid and what you're going to tell people because you're going to need to. You know, the, the, the other services that are going to suffer if you really think about it, Zillow, Redfin, all of those are buyer-based brokerages, right? They take our listings and give it to a buyer's broker. We sold them the information. Correct. We sold them the information, but we get to take our information back. Those businesses are going to ones that potentially are going to start to suffer. The MLS sells our information, by the way, who they sell it to Zillow and Redfin who are not representing us. I think the whole game needs to be restructured because we're being sold out. Okay. We're being sold out by NAR, by the MLS. We don't need these people. We really don't. This is us. It's our relationships. It's our community. We know these streets better than anybody. We are. I always said this. We're not realtors. We're detectives. We're the best of the best. We can find anything you want. We're the ultimate concierge services. And that's what makes a great broker, a great agent in relationships. So, I mean, I think there's going to be a have to, having to be a lot of re restructuring. And I think, like I said, I think we're going to lose, I think, a third of the, I think, a big portion of new, who's going to want to start off new and get into this business? It's going to be very difficult. For sure. Because what, you always start it, as but, a buyer's but agent. It, but, it, but it already was really difficult. Let's be honest. Well, no, it's going to get more difficult. Correct. But let's be honest. If you look at the last five years of this business, it's been as difficult as... No, it's going to get more difficult. I agree with you. But everything that we're dealing with, we've already been dealing with... Look, we have co-listings, right? Together. We're at 1% co-listed. It's two. I get it. But we've already gone down that sure. path. We just have. That, but yeah, and we're spending a fortune been, on those I listings. With you. I have a co-listing with you. We're all working 2% for the seller, 2% for the buyer. But at the end of the day, we have, we're working for 1%. We've Rainy and I are working at a half a percent. Yeah, okay, we're married, too. Well, you're, you're working though. for less than that. That's true. Where does the, more importantly, where does the money go? Is there a joint account? Individual I, accounts? I hold the money. There you go. So it seems at the end like the consumer kind of gets screwed here as well. Of course, because the consumer, if that's part if you're of the, the buyer, if, look, look, if if you're going to go directly to the listing, of I'm screw the buyer's broker, I'm going direct. Who's protecting you? Who's negotiating for you? I'm already negotiating on behalf of the seller. Who's got your dual, best interest dual, in dual mind? That person gets screwed. The buyer doesn't really know if they're getting a good deal or not. They get screwed. And then how do you think it affects the seller? We haven't really talked about that. Do you think the sellers are king now, like the listing agent? 
the sellers have more control because they're going to negotiate the commission more. But that doesn't mean it has to be as drastic as the media and maybe Brandon think. I, 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 I still stand by there's a way to get it done and accomplished. But at the end of the day, you're right. The consumer is going to suffer. Well, then it's always going to come back to what Brandon said is very important is that the, it can't be implemented into the loan, which it, it, it ordinarily is. So then it's going to be a, the next negotiation is, I'm sorry, Mr. Seller, but my buyer can't afford to pay this. And he wants my representation. If you want this deal, you have to implement it into the sales price so he can get a loan on it. So there's going to be. And that's why that paper is so important because otherwise the guy's going to go, oh, what's his name? Hold on. Let me look him up on Instagram. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, you just wrote an offer on my house. Like, I'll do this at, you know, my this, you know, so that that paper is going to be. So how many how many sellers try to cut us out anyways? How many developers? Right. It's just listen. I don't mean to be negative here. I really don't. No, I don't. And I don't think I am being negative. I'm just saying you're being real. Everything is it, it's getting everything is getting cut. The perfect example is what stockbrokers used to make. Okay. They got taken out by E Trade. We I talk, I've been talking to Kurt Rappaport, who's one of the biggest agents, about this forever. He goes, enjoy it while it lasts. We've been talking about this for, for years. For years. Get years. your money. He it's goes, changing. get your money now. It's changing. Enjoy it while it lasts. And listen, I think we have to get upset. I think we have to get pissed of everything that's going on. And I just, and I said it, AI overnight could change and take out a third of the jobs. And a third of the jobs are driving jobs. Overnight, a third of the jobs, already jobs. They lie about unemployment. They lie about everything that's going on. The middle class is getting taken out. And I think we need to take back what's ours. So I'm just saying, get in that mindset. And when you have that mindset of what's yours, you become a lot meaner and leaner and you'll be able to negotiate better with buyer and seller. All right. I mean, the reason why we're up here is we're all scrappers. Every single one of us, Rainey's a scrapper. Josh Flagg is a freaking scrapper. Okay, I don't think you guys know, but this guy is the this is, guy is, is the, is the really Mike is. He really of is. real estate. He he is. Is. No way. You are an MMA way. beast, Aaron Kerman. Okay, I'm not serious. Okay, you are a freaking 500 pound sumo wrestler. You guys are all scrappers, and that's the mindset it's going to take to really be at the top of the food chain in this business. And it's getting, I don't mean to be negative, but this is the reality of the situation. This was a fucked ruling. Let's be honest. Yeah. You are not protected anymore. Okay. There's not, it, your buyers is not on the table. We don't have to pay you anything. Why do I need to, I'll sit back and wait till somebody comes to me and let me, you pay out of your freaking, I'm going to pay you 3%. You pay them a half a point. That's right. God, I'm this sounds saying, like Mad I'm, Max. I'm playing, sounds I'm awful playing now. worst case. It is. Okay. Because we've already gone down that we've had this conversation multiple times. I had an agent that works at our firm call me last night at 10 o'clock at night panicking. He said, I'm closing a deal tomorrow. It was a pocket listing for $9 million and my seller's flipping out on me. Why did I not disclose the new NAR ruling? It was a pocket listing. I said, well, did you have the conversation with him? He said, no, why would I? It's not in effect yet, right? So this is why I'm telling you, because this is a conversation you should, I, I'm going to tell you the full conversation, but this, you should be having this conversation with your clients because guess what? They already know about it. And if they don't, they're going to find out. So it should come from you. So then I said to him, well, his name is Chase. I said, Chase, did, was there a buyer's agent involved? He said, of course. And the buyer's agent could have taken her client anywhere. This was a pocket listing. And I said, I really think you're protected on this. Let's bring in the client. So we spoke to the client on the phone and I said, what would you have rather done? Waited until July and then maybe not paid the 2% and lost this buyer in, 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 a, in a very volatile market and waited to see where the market shakes out in July? Or would you rather have this deal and, and, and pay a buyer's agent that is running around town with their buyer that is actively looking to get paid and go where they will get paid? And what, and what did he say? He said, the seller said, okay, you're right. Yes, I would rather do it. So it's a hard conversation, but you have to have it. But that's my point. You said it, you preached it, you said what, and, this, and, if, and if you say that, sellers agree that at a certain point, if they want to get their household, there's so many arguments you could say. 
A, buyers aren't going to show the house. B, you're going to get a lesser price if you don't give selling agent commissions. There's a hundred, you're not going to get the visibility you need to get it done. There's so many arguments we could create that are true, by the way, that if you position it right, a, 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 a responsible seller is going to say, you know what? I will happily pay the 2% to know that I'm going to get the top dollar in the shortest amount of time and make it work. And you, you proved your own point right there. It's, it's not, not gonna always going to go that way though. So there's going to be He said here. till July. July is the key word. Till July. He goes, you didn't disclose this to me. The guy was already fighting. I told you what happened today. This was a true story. What happened on the phone with the lawyer. We were fighting with him. Had no contract for three. It's been a, been a month now. And finally, I just said, fuck it. Protect ourselves. Yeah. And, and just get this signed. Because so we can end up this list. We, we ended up only getting yeah. our side protected at what was it yeah. two and, and a half or three percent? It's up for discussion yeah. what the what the buyer will get. Because well, what they'll do, they'll offer is, uh, they'll offer Josh Flag two percent, bringing the buyer if you get over thirty million. Yeah, exactly. The tier system. If you and that's give me where this, the yes, consumer exactly. gets fucked again. Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 crazy all the way around. How much time do we have? But but you know we you, went way over. You, you know you you what? You, you guys. Are, what as much time as this, you want. This, but I think this bills. bubble, but this bubble of the 30 and the 20, like the real crutch of what's happening in America is most buyers are gonna need representation because they're buying three hundred thousand dollar houses and four on five and six, and that's their life savings right there, right? And that's where we all as a group need to understand the importance of what we do. And like when we we talk on the stage, because this happens to be a privileged stage. The reality is different for the rest of the world. And I think we need to voice the arguments for the rest of the world because it's not just the elite that need that. It's everyone and everyone's going to need that protection. And as long as we voice our opinions the right way and express the right things, there will always be a way to get paid. There just will be. And if you just don't not believe, as much, and if you don't believe that there will be, then get out of the business, get out of the business. Cause this isn't going to be your business anymore. If you're not willing to fight to get paid, leave now. But if you believe that you have a worth and you believe that you're here to protect clients and you believe that there's that, that what we do is actually important, then stand up and fight. Since this happened, every one of my clients has asked me, well, what about the buy side commission? When I've signed listings, every single one of them has said, do I have to pay it? I said, you absolutely have to pay it. It's non-negotiable. And here's why. And guess what? They all signed it. Well, well you need I, to teach I, a master class. I think, start no, there. I That's think, where you're going to make up I the think difference. the key is, though, is to make sure to make the seller understand that they will not be able to pay for this usually if it comes out of their pocket. So you have to implement it in the deal and implement it in the mortgage. Because if you say, what's $100,000 on a... 30 year mortgage, it's a hundred extra dollars a month or, you know, 50 extra dollars a month and you make them in. And I, you know, I, I earned my worth. So that's really going to be the key is to make sure that you're thinking ahead to implement it in the mortgage. And last thing I want to say, our website in the next two weeks, we'll have all commissions published because we are allowed to put the commissions on our own website and Instagram. If you have your own website, you're a listing agent, put that commission on our my brokerage will have all commissions being offered in the next two weeks. My own personal website will have that. I mean, this is exactly what they were trying to accomplish by suing NAR and everyone else. No, is they were, steering. It was, a, it was an industry and that's shaking. still what's happening. It was, listen, bottom line. They didn't accomplish shaking. that. Consumers are still screwed. Now the brokers, brokers are screwed with them. I think there's, there's a no lot difference. of very, I think there's a lot of very uh, seasoned agents in here and a lot of really smart minds. I see Sharona is here who's been in the business longer than all of us I, and she's hi, a legend my sharona if you sharona, don't know her sharona, that's about sharona, sharona. i didn't even see you what is that? what is, i would like to hear from people like sharona what's your thoughts what's your takes on it being in the business longer than all of us and i mean that out of respect no i didn't but sharona and i spoke earlier today and you were extremely impassioned and we were both worried we wouldn't get, you know, we'd get we'd get a lot of excitement. But there was a lot of truth up here. But you you had some great points and words, and you scared me when you did it. But we've got to hear the truth.
you know, it is not a hard truth. I love your optimism, but this is a huge change. And of course, we're going to change, but there's never been a change like this so far. In all my years, there's never been one change that equals this. And why? Because, like, you know, um, Rainey said it, the first thing she said, it's degrading. It just kind of is fucking degrading to ask from your buyers. Now, I am also a buyer's agent, you know, I've sold a lot of like, you know, specialized in bachelors and producers, and I sold a lot of buyer's houses. But what besides the organic part that's kind of removed from showing a property, I just need to understand this contract we're signing for, with buyers. Because now we're saying, first we have to prove ourselves that I'm a really like kind of like modded, like I don't like to be in front of the camera. I don't like to toot my own horn. Sharona, you don't have to prove yourself. We all love you. You're you're proven. But don't you're the buyers. 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 Not only do I have to prove myself, but I have to prove that because of me, there's something about this stuff. You signed a contract because of my expertise. You just bought this house. This is a glossy world that is going to be. Huge now for big agents, buyers agents, um, who represent them. The amount, what are we saying? We're saying that we are going to give you, we have to be on top of it. We need to know everything. We're, we love you. We're, and I still do believe for my clients. I cry for my fucking clients. Like, besides my, uh, you know, experience, I care fucking beyond for my clients. But besides that, if I'm going to, like, um, they're not buying this house because of me. They're not buying it because of me. And they're buying it, I'm helping them, I'm their guide through it. But now it's based upon my expertise. And if it's my expertise, I'm not allowed to, and I'm so committed to them, so I'm not allowed to tell maybe another buyer about the same house because I was committed to them. So if my MLS is like hitting more than one buyer, then I might have three $10 million buyers. Am I not? I signed a contract with what, each and every one of them, so I'm confused about the buyer's contract. I think it's super fucked. And, uh, well, it's also it's also very early on. You know, we don't we we just don't know enough. I think at this point, there's a hundred. Yeah, we page do. We know what's headed our way. Come on. Well, we do. Ultimately, ultimately, I think we Sharona get what we gets have it to too. Do. I think Sharona really gets it, and I actually paid her. To say that, and that's why I called on you. So, so thank you so much, Ronan. He's the Mad Max of real estate. It's a dark, crazy world. Andrew, you have a question? Uh, yeah, Comment? I'm turn it over to Nick, but I have a question. Um, you know, a lot of times, I think, besides touched on, well, what if I just talk into a house with a friend slash client? Um, and how many of your clients do you consider friends that you would trust to pay you a commission if you didn't get said by a representation of something. And two part question, are you going to go to every single one of them throughout your day and make sure you get something signed? I mean, look, I, I think whenever money's involved, whether it's your best friend or not, it's always great to get things signed. I historically haven't with friends. Um, I think that it's going to change. And well, I guess I, now you have to. And now right? we're going to have you, you to. You can't get right. access I, without I, it. Yeah, I mean, I think it, that's I think, what I think, I think we have to do it. Well, it's not even we, that. We even the sellers it. aren't. The, the The law says that you cannot do it. It's sort of like the the stupid peed forms that we had to sign during COVID. I, I mean, but guess what? How many people didn't sign What's them? What's the violation? But I think it, I don't I know, know but, what the violation. But hold on. But does that mean? If you have the listing, they still a buyer has to come in and sign with you if you have the listing. If they want to see the property, yes. Yeah, so they have to sign with you too. Yeah. Correct. That's a really good question, actually, about the open houses. Um, is what that was uh, that was one of the things that came Marvel. up it was one of the the, the big contentious points is like how, well, what do you do in an open house well, there's the, a carve out, there's a carve out for listing agent i mean again it's going to lean it's going to go back to leaning towards that listing agent because there's a lot in there that makes the listing agent a king or queen again i line. also think that there'll be the the 
Sharonas of the world that the buyers have bought many things from, and they're going to say, we want you and we know what you do for us and we know your value. So come with us and bring that form. And then it's going to be a but part of the great. negotiation. You're going to say 3% on the form and the seller is going to say, I'm not paying 3%. And you're so gonna, you're yeah. gonna have to negotiate, but I want to talk. We have a very big, uh, uh, we have a, a, a vice president of a firm here today. We have a very big celebrity. We have Farah here who owns several companies. Runs. Let's. We all know that you're the brains behind the agency. What does Farah <laughs> have to say? What's your? What have you and your um your uh, your father think about this? Very very optimistic. Things that. Like Randy said, right like now we're just gonna really have to be improving our value, and we might even be able to ask for more commission. Of course, this is the first time talking. And, and he also started. And he also wanted to start his own NAR. Correct. He's also been very clear uh, against the NAR big time, and, and almost founded something new, right? He's trying to. He's doing something. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up too. <laughs> so what do you think? So you said what Mauricio thinks. What do you think? I think that there's definitely opportunities. And we're all going to have to just adjust. And I think that we're going to, if we can prove our value, be able to try to get you know as much commission as we possibly can. I think, like you said, that this is nothing new. We're not reinventing the wheel. It's just about educating our clients and being able to explain how you know, commissions have always been negotiated. And this is no different, really. It's just getting creative. I think we're all very you know, solution oriented. We've done a lot of creative deals. And we're just going to have to be thinking more and more outside of the box. It might be one and a half percent from the buyer, one and a half from the seller, or you know, what one in one and a half, whatever. It's just going to be creative thinking, and this is new and it, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, and I don't, but and I, and I don't want to. Probably Josh Flag's the only one that has it too, because he, he's never had to. This guy doesn't even need to come to work. Okay, <laughs> he does this for fun. He's the only psychopath up here that he actually likes this business and does this for fun. God bless you. I, I, I agree with that. I, I know, but and and that's what makes him so special. But um um. <laughs> Let's be honest. We've all reduced our commission for sellers. Okay. So let's, we've all cut our commissions. Not me. Not I me. won't do it. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm start I know. You, better start I the say, you could get someone from the value. Yeah, but you have a billion, you, yeah, but you were, you have a billion dollar trust fund. Shut Guys, we're also good at we do what we do. It's time to not shy away and prove our worth. We don't need to be afraid of that. Like these are changes unlike anything we've ever seen, but we're good at this. Like there's no reason we can't protect consumers in the ways we have before even better. You know, it's like Ferris said, you got it. Like it's what Mo does. It's how he made his living. It's like, it doesn't really matter what happens to you. It's what you do about it. I'm Great. listen, the higher end I think is always going to be negotiable. I'm talking about the overall mainstream market. We actually have somebody very smart here today that understands the commercial world, that understands residential. Adam Rubin's in the house. I would love, he's a very Zach, smart guy. Zach, I thought you were me. Hey, no, seriously. We I'm, bookend this. No, 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 no. Adam, be honest. What do you think? What's your overall take being a seller, being a buyer, being in commercial and residential? And he's also a partner in Carrollwood. Am I right? Is Carol what? So obviously Andrew and I come from our, the vast majority of our transactions are in commercial real estate. Um, where lawyers rule basically. Lawyer brokers are there and the brokers get paid, commissions are much lower. And no, you know, lawyers are not they kill deals and they don't know markets, and that's the problem. You can, as a buyer of a house, go hire a lawyer and pay him. You know, even the top end lawyer, twelve hundred bucks an hour, and you know, it might cost you fifty grand to get a house done or something like that. That's the top, top, top end. So they don't know the market. All they know is to fight. A lot of times they fight irrationally and they don't get deals done, and it really doesn't help anyone because at the end of the day, like you were saying, they don't know the streets. They're not. They don't know ten thousand houses. They just know what the documents look like. At the end of the day, you can do a residential deal. Most of you guys use transaction coordinators anyway to push the paper. But what comes down to it, I've done deals with most of you up here. Is the negotiating the 11th hour? That's what you need. 
figuring it out. Right? The, the question but what do you think is going to happen with our commissions and where they're at? Thank you. By, by how much? That's by, been by, coming by, for by a long, long time. time. By, how much, by how much? How how much do you think it's going to get squeezed? Be honest. I would say. Let's say standard commissions are five, not in the luxury market, regular market five. Yes, exactly. From all the times you tried to from fuck the, me on the commission. From the look on your face, it looks like you're squeezing us right now. He's he's look at his. He's like I'm down to one percent. Yeah. How, how much? Wait. I know. I know. But, Okay, so what do you so what do you How think? How many fights what, have we had over commissions? You think the he's saying fifty percent, fifty fucking percent. Okay, this is guys, wake up! It's time to fight. I'm telling you right now. Get your guns ready. Mad you think Max. it's a fucking joke? <laughs> Let me tell you something too. And they're coming for much more shit of yours. Look at what's going on. He reloaded. You think it's a joke? You think it's a joke? It's not a fucking job. Okay. Look at your groceries now. Look at your cost of living. All of us since ULA happened are making way less money. They're squeezing us to death. You think it's a joke? It's not a fucking joke. I'm telling you right now. It's going to be the it's survival of the fittest. Okay. I'm reloading. <laughs> oh, that's a bad guy. Whoa. I don't need to pay you the full five percent. But we've had that conversation before. <laughs> You're the toughest negotiator I know. But he has a billion dollar trust fund. When you have a billion dollar trust fund, you can do that. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I'm gonna say you get what you pay for and you can go hire somebody else for a lot less and good luck when you get in a lawsuit or you end up not getting the best deal negotiated for you and you're gonna be really regretting it. You're gonna call me afterwards. Same conversation I've had for 20 years. By the way, if you look at the MLS when all my deals close, half of the time I represent both the buyer and seller. I know. So there's, because I'm really good at this and I explain to the buyer, they come in, this is a whole different conversation. But anyway, the, the point is I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna reduce my commission. But Josh also has a lock on like the sixty-year-old women and or sixty-year-old seventy older, plus, 60, really wealthy, 60, really 60 wealthy 90 women that had that can barely hear that sell one house a decade, and that's why he's as good as he's They're good. They're on dialysis. They're all on the, like he has a really he. Come to think about it, he where's has the candy? Best candy? Market, what? He really has the best niche market. I think of all of. I us. have a niche. They're also his they can't best friend. They can't it's a weird see, and they're all on their deathbed. No wonder why they're giving him five percent. I got Brentwood and Hillcrest on tap. So, Josh, you are not changing your practices at all. He doesn't it's, need it's to. Like his clients if you were are dying. in a coma, and you never heard any of this. You're back as you I'm were. Actually, no, I'm not really. Worried. So, but what's your conversation, Josh? When you have a house, yeah, what you have a house, you want to show. You call Candy Spelling. You're like, hey, Candy, do you want to meet at the Polo Lounge? and talk about this house and then you slipper the contract and you're like, by the way, Twitter. the new rule is you have to sign this. How do you get it signed? I wouldn't even need that because A, we have such a close relationship. I would never, we would You can't get together. in. You can't this get in like with that. COVID, remember, you just, you know, nobody signed those papers. I it hope It comes so. down okay. to what the penalties are again. Is it, you, you know lose what? your license or you pay a $50 fine? Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out, I guess. What is Ben? We have another uh, really smart, talented agent here, Ben yeah. Bilak. I'd love to hear what Ben thinks. Bilak. Ben Bilac, Let's everyone. Bilac. <laughs> um, it's Bilac. It's <laughs> Bilac's more European. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I've done a couple posts with the real deal about this, and the majority of the comments are we don't work and we get paid too much. 100%. And I think what I've been hearing all of you say, and I look up to all of you, um, is how we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about our value. And most of us, when we go in, for example, in a listing, it's always something that's abstract. We have the best marketing, just believe us. And um, I think as a sector, we've done a really, really bad job organizing and to be honest, when it's award season in this town, I cringe a bit because we all talk about our volume and it's made the consumers think 
that we're fucking rich and they don't know that like you're on vacation and you're on the phone with your clients at 9 30 at night in a different time zone and i also think since the consumers got all this information from zillow we started in the non-luxury market pricing on the lower end to create multiples so quickly and in a pack mentality we all said i fucking sold it over asking in two seconds consumers again are like these guys are doing no work and they're making a ton of money and i think that for too long are you talking about tori horowitz it's really funny that you say that because i've i've mentioned that <laughs> but let me just say that i think that for too long we've made our value us and we need to now together the only way we're going to get the buyers to sign these broker agreements because well, I'm with you. You're extremely optimistic. I'm, I'm not, not. By the way, I'm not that optimistic. I, I like. I uh, like. I'm. I'm let me actually. Say, Aaron, let me yeah. just say that we know that the developers are always saying to us, "The person who brings me the deal is yeah. going to get paid," and the consumers are now going to shift to this. I think that we have to get back to a point where we're making it about the consumer wins. If we're going to want new consumers to pony up and pay us, two things. Two things. Do you know how much the average real estate agent makes in the country? D does anybody know here? Because this is not yeah, the nothing. real world. They sell nothing. zero the to average, one houses. The average per real year. estate agent in America makes forty four thousand dollars, and that's There's nation no way in yes, the nation. No, no way nationwide. Trust me, I know nationwide. It's between forty four and forty eight. You would know this. I think I'm right though. Correct. Average price of every uh, average salary, average real estate agent is forty four forty eight. What you guys. We are in Beverly Hills. It's a bubble here, right? But if you look at what agents make and how hard they work and how many deals they lose to get to make that $48,000, they are underpaid, 100% underpaid, by the way, because it is a hard world out there. This ruling is what it is. We are where we are. I'm not optimistic. I'm just saying, you know what? If I'm not big enough to fight the system, I wish I was. Brandon might be bigger than I am, and he might be like louder and really willing to fight the system. I agree with a lot of the things you said, 100%. And we had this talk outside, right? But that said, I'm not an optimist. I'm like, look, I'm going to roll with the punches. I'm going to do what I need to do. I know we have value, and I agree with you. And you know what? They're consumer. They see those shows, one of which I think you were on. Right, one of which well, you were well, on. Yeah, that is that see, is some of flashing, it looks easy. Flashing huge and commissions. They see a false reality of what our job That's is. Right. So those shows did yeah. some good and they did some bad. Let's be honest, right? By the that way, is, it wasn't just the shows. It's social media. It's Instagram. What do you post on your Instagram? The times where you lost a client? No, you post all your big sales, everything right. great, and so everyone looks at you and be like, "Wow, big time! You're doing well." But you're, you're talking and then about, they you're talking then about, it's it's wide open to squeeze. But you guys can't look, and this is, you can't look at this stage, and call that normal. That this is not normal. Like nobody sells two billion dollars a year in real estate. That's just this stage. If you look at the industry as a whole, you haven't saw my numbers this year. You, you haven't seen mine either. Yeah, <laughs> fair, fair. Her um, and I were neck and neck. <laughs> Yeah, I guess neither of us hit that. Um, uh, both of us were far. So you were right there too, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, we'll finish your point. Uh, point of the story is I think that we have to look at it granularly and look at the market as a whole and say, listen, what are the average consumers going to do that are buying a condo in Minnesota for $300,000? And is our system going to allow them not to have representation? And is real estate simple enough that a discount broker is going to step in for $1,000 and say, I'll do all the work? Maybe that's possible, but historically that hasn't worked because this business is hard, it's challenging, and there's too many moving parts to allow that to really happen. And that's why it hasn't happened because it hasn't optimism, been an option. It's an option now, and people take options. It was always, always, been, always an, option. Been an option. No, it's perception. Know. I know, but know. it's like everything else we Rainy. do. Perception, perception is reality. Perception. How many so we can go back to them now and be like, yeah, they, 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 wants it's to say always something. been the same, and it's going to continue. We weren't even allowed to like bring up the uh, commission when you're negotiating. No, we don't know that part. <laughs> <laughs> How do you to a buyer yeah. or 
the first time they're talking with the buyer that we're going to do everything, we're going to bring it to them, but we're not going to show them properties that we don't get paid on? Yeah, it's our job. Oh, that's why consumers are getting screwed here. The consumer is getting screwed with this settlement. That's right. That is that is true. No, they'll say no problem. We'll look with somebody else. But I mean, of course, we have to say that it's a very hard conversation. But you, this is how you make a living. I mean, you're not just going to drive people around for fun. You know, it's just like a single party. We have to just treat it as a single party. And you know, unfortunately, it's an extra step, but we, I think, I think we're all going to get there and we're all going to have new tools and negotiation techniques, which we didn't have before. And by the way, use it, use it. If, it, if, it, if, if the system has changed, use it to your advantage, whatever that advantage is, figure it out. We'll figure it out together. Let's get on a phone. Yeah. Let's figure out how to make more money together. Let's figure out how to get more listings together. Let's figure out how to get higher percentage of listings so that we can share with our, our buyer's agents. Yeah. Let's figure out how to get more pockets. Let's figure out how to get more dual representation. All of these things are possible. I'm sorry. I'm not, maybe I'm positive. Maybe I'm not. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I'll, I'll listen, cards on the table. I'll do what I need to do to get to where I want to get to in an honest, ethical way. And if that means using the system to my benefit, I will. Listen, we understand what you're going to do, but we're just, I'm, I'm explaining what's going to really the overall, what's going to happen in the business and the overall effect of this. And I think we've heard a lot of great opinions. Who, who are you, sir? <laughs> and, Oh, what do you think? I mean, come on. You seem like you're, you're, what's your you're opinion? So quiet. You're, you're the one that has the most information. I, I, I think you guys are really, really fantastic. I've been, you know, a pretty good perspective to about, you know, got like 80 offices and talking to a lot of people. And I think, you know, Aaron, I'm, I'm very aligned with, we, we are presented with the, I agree with all of you. There's all, all of it. You're not, none of you are wrong. And what do you do? Like we are faced with this option, which is work with what you've got. And so we have to be better. And there's probably going to be working harder or more less commission. But you're, you're absolutely right. You have to work with what we have, and you have to work with your teams and your agents and all of these things. And they need to get better. And they need to get better fast. Uh, this is, we, we have about, what, 80, 100 days. And when, when the pandemic came, we didn't have any time, and everyone adapted. So I just encourage all of your teams and your offices to, uh, they need to learn the dialogues, figure out the strategies mm -hmm. and, and use them. And last question for you. What do you think the percentage of decrease of business compass is gonna, in general, like, do you think it's 50? Do you think it's 60? Do you think it's 30 or 20? This is really hard to say. The, you know, I've looked to the state of Washington. They went to, about 18 months ago, they went to zero, uh, I'm sorry, the MLS allowed them to put zero percent uh, as cooperating brokerage uh, commission. And their commission percentage in the last 18 months has not changed. So uh, the vote, the, that's just the- How do you know that statistic? Uh, I've got it from my colleagues in- uh, So you're from Compass in Washington and said it's, it's changed, it, it hasn't changed at all? Yeah, I just got the stats from the offices up there. Well, that's pretty amazing. So now, look, it's, it's something that you can say, you know, about Redfin, so Redfin, has been around for 20 years offering 1% and they have 0.7% market share. So in that exactly. instance, you could say that the buyers and sellers are voting with their pocketbooks. Yeah. Uh, the market know, is performing. performing. The market's performing, they're voting with their pocketbooks. They want your expertise. Um, but Europe it's on the other side, but yeah, now there's yet another conversation to negotiate. But that's great. I think we got to end on that. That's a really positive ending. I think we adjust and crush. Is it the all we can do? I want to thank Estate Media for putting this on. Andrew Shanfeld for hosting us at this piece of shit. And all the panelists, you guys, thank you so much for being a part of this and lending your time and expertise. And all of you for being a part of this. You were all filmed, so I hope you were smiling. Um, and there's a lot more of this to come. I think Estate Media is going to put a lot more of these on. We're going to do a lot more of these, and we're going to learn and grow together. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, everyone.